What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Talk Other Tundra, your Green Bay Packers podcast, a proud partner of the Eurostep Podcast Network and the Blue Wire family. As always, I am your jubilant host, Dumak, and joining me after a what feels like forever, a Packers win. Jordan, how are you doing, buddy? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. It is finally good to talk about a Packers win that wasn't extending one of their best players. We're talking about a football game that they actually won. They played the game and they won. And, yes. and it was a joyous, joyous time. It was an ugly football game. Packers went over the Los yes. Angeles Rams 20 to 3, featuring so many turnovers and some mind boggling decisions and things like that. But it was a win nonetheless. 20 to 3, Packers win at Lambeau. On a rainy day, which probably caused a lot of the uh, a lot of the the messiness we saw throughout. So, uh, I think first things first, we ought to just start with the defense, considering that that three number stands out uh, quite heavily amongst the Packers' defensive performances as of late and throughout the season. Um, by far, the lowest they've held a, an opponent to the the entire year, um, in part thanks to. The Rams starting starting Brett Ripien, former uh, Denver Bronco at quarterback in place, and Matthew Stafford who had a thumb injury, as well as the Rams not having any of their top uh, rushers they've had throughout the year and being forced to start uh, Daryl Henderson Jr., who was in a platoon with Royce Freeman the entire day. So, I guess first things first, Jordan, what did you think of the defense? I guess who stood out most for you? Um, thankfully we could talk about a lot of players. Um, I thought perhaps the most impactful, at least early on in terms of setting the tone was Jonathan Owens. I thought he was very physical. We saw the strip sack, even with a bobbled snap that kind of put Rippy and, you know, <laughs> running backwards already. Um, Jonathan Owens is made a really good heads of play. And I just thought, you know, for his limitations, considering the secondary was thin, no Rudy Ford going into this game, no Quay Walker, two guys that are equally physical and um, I don't, their own distinctive sort of ways. Um, I just thought he kind of brought it really from the start. It was making tackles, making plays to really stuff out a Rams offense that, as you mentioned, very toothless. <laughs> we can't forget that part of it because without their starting quarterback and without their leading rusher on the season, it showed. But credit where credit is due, and he was making plays to start this game that really helped the defense kind of settle their feet um, or settle in really quickly. And I thought it just kind of set the tone for the entire day. Yeah, absolutely. I, he had the most tackles on the team, according to PFF's box score, at, with eight, including five solo tackles. Uh, you mentioned the strip sack and the forced fumble. Like, we had been dogging on Jonathan Owens, a.k.a. Mr. Simone Biles, for a few weeks now. But it's I'm just happy to see that the defensive players that we were been kind of ragging on against getting burnt against better teams at least showed up to task against the the worst teams right like we are the Packers I should say we the Packers are a bad team and I think today was evidence of that because they played pretty outstandingly against a worse team uh talent wise at the moment like I think full strength the Rams are probably a little better than the Packers even with Matthew Stafford's age but with Brett Ripien not having made 20 starts in his career the rain and not having a pretty strong run game like the Packers showed up and Jonathan Owens was one of those players too that really rose to the task in a week when Rudy Ford was out in a week where Quay Walker is out um just a, a good positive result for the Packers today hopefully in a way that they can uh, start building off of the rest of the year but I think another one of the the bigger impact players was Carrington Valentine got picked on the last two weeks just over and over again, wasn't really getting a whole lot of uh, a love, love from us or any of the Packers or any Packers fans, I should say, and was really all over Puka Nakua all day long. For the most part, I shouldn't say all day long, but I think he's on Puka sometimes, he's on Cooper Cup sometimes, and that well. yeah, he was he was all over the place and played quite well, frankly. Um, trying to find his his brief stats here: two tackles, 
um, but three pass deflections on the day for Carrington Valentine. Like, that's that's really good. He had a couple where I thought it was like, bang, bang, he might have gotten there a tad early, but they didn't call it, so it's a positive play. And I think he was um, really excited to be playing at the level he was playing at today against those receivers because while the Rams are down their quarterback and a few of their running backs, the receivers were full of strength. Like, Cooper Cup, yeah. Puka Nakua, and Tutu Atwell were all, were all out there. And... You could probably say that the quarterback play somewhat influenced how the receivers played. But when he was available, Carrington Valentine played pretty well and rose to the occasion to really, I guess, stunt any of those uh, drives they're trying to put together. Because a few of those plays came on third down when they were really critical. Yeah, I, I thought he, again, another guy that was pretty poised, playing physical right away, set the tone. You could tell he was really jazzed, making... His second start, I guess. Um, and he was a guy that going into this game, that I th- he was my Packer player to watch in terms of this is a very strong receiving core. We knew that Stafford was at least a 50-50 shot, at least by the time they were recorded the preview pod. And pretty much it did. <laughs> it, it Maybe it was exaggerated how close he was to playing, but gamesmanship aside the Rams certainly brought it down to the wire before news broke that Ripken was going to make the start and I just thought you got to play against who you're playing against or what's the quote you play who's in front of you that's the better way of saying it um and Karen Valentine had tough challenges and rose to that challenge really well today and a guy that they said that they want to see more of moving forward well we're gonna see a lot more of them and hopefully it looks more like today than versus what we saw in the broncos game yeah absolutely i think looking at back at his plays thanks to your studious notes here throughout the game um his first uh pass breakup was on, on third and nine on a pass intended for tutu atwell um blew up a screen on their next on the rams uh next drive and then uh Drew a, an OPI from Puka on an out route where he just shoved Valentine right out of the way to try and make the catch. So good defense there, and just got pen or was the subject on a, the victim of a penalty. I guess is the way to put it. Yeah, um, that that set the Rams back Drew. even more. Right. Yeah, drew a penalty. Thank you. And then jumped another pass um, late in the fourth quarter with um, on first and ten. So like he was just all over the place, really, really doing well. So seventh round pick. It'll, we'll see how it, how it goes for him the rest of the season, but if he can continue to step up with this type of receivers and maybe a little better quarterbacks, then maybe he turns into a, a serviceable player. But I think that'll obviously be a process thing that we'll see for the rest of the year as in his continued development. Yeah, and the other thing too is that like we you know we talk about the secondary and just the. Joe Barry of it all of utilizing the physicality that the corners bring, whether it's now Karen to Valentine or Jair or stuff like that. When you see it like today and yes, game conditions weren't great. Second straight quarterback starting for the Rams. All that context aside, like we saw like this team can really get under the skin of (laughs) the opposing team. And I think that just, there's ways that they can go about it better, obviously, being a young team and channel it in a more focused way. And that just comes with time and experience and everything like that because, you know, penalties are always going to be an issue. Um, but I do think today was more of like they just needed – it didn't feel manufactured. They did, It wasn't – It what really was not in line or – um informed by the Packers scoring on the first drive or whatever. Like they deferred from the get-go and the defense be on the field to start the game really set the tone. And again, we can't forget why they limited the Rams to just three points and had their best defensive performance of the year. Um, but still, I do think that does say something that it felt very organic rather than, Hey, you know, a touchdown is going to spring this up. It was like, no, we are going from the get go, especially after a very turbulent week where you lose a leader on that side of the ball. And 
it's all about who's going to step up. And we saw, we've already named a couple of guys that haven't stepped up all that much this mm-hmm. start the year, but moving forward, they can really step it up in a, hopefully a bigger way. Yeah, absolutely. I think you mentioned Jair's name, uh, had a, had an okay game today. He had gotten beat on a few different plays, but ultimately had a pretty impactful play on a great zone read. Um, where he followed Brett Ripien's eyes to get a big pass deflection that landed right in the, where the ball ran right in the lap of Anthony Johnson Jr., who also played well today. I think we should we should add. Yes. Um, but I think, like you said, just, it just being an organic defensive effort, I think, was pretty evident today. They were really good against the rush. We'll get to that in a little bit. But um, Brett Ripien, 13 of 28, 130 yards with one interception. And his longest was a 34-yard play to uh, Cooper Cup in like the second quarter, I think, ish. Um, and so I think through the first quarter and, and through that through that play in the second quarter that, that passed to Cooper Cup, the Rams defense offense only had 45 yards in the first quarter, which is huge for the, um, the Packers because I think the broadcast said in, in the um, in the first quarter the Rams are the fourth highest scoring offense in the NFL. But the yes. Packers defense has only allowed three points on opening drives um, this year. So it's kind of like a one of those battles that really puts the test, which is the better unit. And today it was the Packers, despite the um, the tampered expectations that the Rams offense, I'm sure, had. But it still made a big difference into how well they were going to shape up the rest of the game. But we only had the one reception. Should have had two. He had um, yes. a ball that landed right in Carrington uh, Valentine's arms and just went right through it. Uh, I think that was late in the th- fourth quarter, mid fourth quarter, or something like that. It was pretty late in the game. Yeah. Um, I think it wasn't it was it the play that ended the the game essentially. I'm pretty sure it was. It was I like, think that was their. I think that was, was their last offensive play. Yeah, like the Rams' last last offensive play. Yeah. Because I remember I saw Carrington Valentine like jumping up and down, hitting his head and whatnot. And I saw everyone else, like celebrating. I'm like, what happened? It's like, oh, it's the end of the game. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. So, <laughs> um, yeah, for all intents and purposes, a good effort by the secondary today. And what you said was a turbulent week, having lost um, Russell Douglas in that uh, in that locker room. So glad to see everyone um, step up. Keisha Nixon, I think, played well today. He very had, well. Yeah. Very even, well. Even, I really like this game. Yeah. Even outside of um his his kick return that got nullified um due to more penalties than I'd like to care to admit. Um still I think played played quite well and was was an impactful player. I think I'm trying to find his um his stats here, but five tackles I yeah, see. Five tackles, no PBUs or anything, but five tackles as a corner slot guy is, is pretty good. Yeah. Um, trying to think of who else, who else could we touch on? Do you want to move to the Jair? rest? No, go ahead, go on, Jair. Well, I, actually, actually, my thought there was a kind of a good comment from kind of a good. There's a good comment during the game, to the broadcast, um, from Adam and me, the play-by-play announcer, and he mentioned that Jair Alexander said like this is the best he's felt in a month, and it showed in terms of his play. He was just a lot more engaged. It wasn't. You know, he was not that an effort problem is, you know, ever Jair's problem. About, yeah. Um, but we saw him just, it, it's it was about making impact, impactful plays over the course of the entire game rather than a couple here and there, one a drive or whatever. Right. I just thought as the game went along, you know, we felt his. In, his presence again against a good wide receiver core, despite a second street quarterback that struggled a lot. 